Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and as the title of the video suggests, today we're going to discuss the idea of Big Bang versus some kind of a cyclical repeatable universe. In other words, we're going to try to tackle the question of, did everything in the universe begin with the Big Bang, potentially coming from some kind of a small point, and expanding all the way into the universe we have today? Or is the universe a little bit more cyclical, maybe even repeating these Big Bangs over and over and over again? Is the universe recycling itself over and over? And although it's not an easy question to answer, and there have been some potential evidence suggesting the existence of previous universes, based on certain evidence coming from the cosmic microwave background, at the moment the idea of these previous universes, or even multiple universes, is still a little bit more on the hypothetical side, as opposed to scientific side, where the Big Bang theory sort of prevails. And so let's discuss some of these ideas, but I guess let's first define exactly what we're talking about. This is not really a discussion of multiple universes, as in like there are multiple universes existing right now, or possibly even touching each other and interacting, but instead we're talking about a kind of a proposition of universes existing one after another, possibly even involving multiple Big Bangs that happen over and over, or potentially a Big Bang followed by a Big Crunch, where after expanding for billions of years, the universe starts to contract, becoming a tiny point, which then leads to what's known as the Big Bounce. The universe restarts again. With quite a lot of prominent scientists basically subscribing to one of these ideas to some extent. For example, the famous Nobel laureate Roger Penrose is a big proponent of what's known as conformal cyclical cosmology. He does believe that the Big Bang is just one of many Big Bangs that happen over and over. But I guess the main question here would be, why exactly do we even have these additional propositions? Why is Big Bang theory just not enough? Well, it's mostly because some scientists do not really agree with certain propositions, including the principle of inflation, which tries to explain certain observations in the universe as a sudden unexplained expansion that happened in the first few moments of the existence of the universe, dramatically increasing the size of the universe almost instantly, as well as certain other propositions, including dark matter and dark energy, which some scientists believe would be explained better if the Big Bang instead was actually something cyclical. At least one model, known as the steinhardt turok model, basically tries to explain everything by using an entirely different principle, including cyclical cosmology. Although this one here is relatively complex, and I'm definitely going to be explaining this in a separate video sometime in the future, so make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. But you can actually watch one of the scientists, Neil Turok, explain it in his own words, in one of the videos in the description. Uh, P.S. It is really, really complex though, so don't feel bad if you don't get it. Honestly, I'm still scratching my head about some of the concepts he proposes. Anyway, long story short, a lot of scientists, smart scientists, try to basically explain the universe in alternative ways, for one reason or another. But the question is, do they have a lot of evidence or is it mostly all theoretical or hypothetical? Is there any reason to doubt the existence of the Big Bang and is there any evidence for previous universes? Well, when it comes to these bouncing universes, the main argument here is that current universe did not emerge from nothing. According to them, previous universe shrunk just enough to then bounce back and regrow into a universe that we have today. There is no real way of knowing how many times this happened, but there have been propositions that this is maybe something that's basically infinite. A constant process of bouncing back with infinite amount of Big Bangs happening over and over. But the only true evidence we could ever find of this would be by observing the oldest light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background. Now, even though originally the scientists sort of thought that we're going to basically see just a kind of a uniform light coming from everywhere, as you can see, this doesn't seem to be the case. There definitely are certain sectors that are a little bit colder and certain sectors that are a little bit warmer. And to a lot of cyclical scientists, this presented a potential proof that maybe these are actually signs of previous universes. Although alternatively, it's also been proposed as a potential sign for a multiple universe that's basically rubbing against our own. So yeah, quite a lot of explanations for what's happening here. One specific spot that a lot of scientists were super interested in, and by the way, there's a video about this in the description as well, is the peculiar area that we refer to as the the cold spot. Something that's actually located in the constellation of Eridanus, and something that today we're pretty certain is very likely not the sign of multiple universes, but instead is actually a sign of a very, very large supercluster. Oh, I guess I just spoiled that video for you. Well, you should still watch it though. Anyway, there are definitely more common explanations to what exactly we're seeing here, 
or why CMB contains these strange variations. But maybe these anomalies imply that there was something before our universe after all. And in at least one of these propositions, loop quantum cosmology, that relies on the quantum mechanics and specifically what's known as loop quantum gravity, there is actually a very specific proposition that can be tested. Here the idea is that once the universe becomes small enough, a lot of effects become quantum in nature, and so instead of turning into some kind of a singularity or a black hole, the universe suddenly expands again, leaving certain marks behind. The study here describes it a little bit better, but it's basically known as bispectrum, which measures how different parts of the universe interact with one another. And this type of bispectrum would actually show up as very specific frequencies inside the CMB observations. So if we do detect some kind of a bispectrum in those frequencies, this idea might actually have merit after all. But very recently, some of the scientists decided to try to see if they can actually find anything by going through a very thorough analysis of the CMB. And the recent study from 2023 discovered pretty much nothing, implying that at least this proposition might not really be correct. But that's of course a proposition involving quantum physics and the idea of quantum gravity. There are other propositions as well. For example, in the Roger Penrose proposition, the universe never even has to have a compression stage, and it can actually go through continuous big bangs, expanding over and over and over again, going through the cycles of big bangs. And there is an older video that you can find in the description that discusses this in a little bit more detail. But in a nutshell, what the science has discovered is that, well, if that's the case, knowing what we know about the universe, these constant increases in size and these constant big bangs, along with the universe just existing for a very long time, would also cause something else to change in the universe to the point where it would be very difficult to explain. With every single additional universe, the idea of entropy increases dramatically as well. And this principle of entropy is very important in cosmology. This is of course what we sometimes refer to as disorder of a system. And so with higher and higher entropy, the amount of useful energy becomes infinitely small. And that sort of implies that at some point, we're going to reach a universe where you can't really make anything else, with all of the energy being extremely disorganized and no useful energy available for anything. And so after just a few of these bounces, the universe just becomes too disorganized to get anywhere, or to produce anything useful, or to even have stars and planets. With the other implication being that if you go back in time, at some point the universe was extremely organized and very very low in entropy, which would also not really make a lot of sense or at least present new problems. Now, there have been some propositions to explain this by basically having the universe kind of smooth itself out over time and reduce the entropy somehow, but these are just unnecessary solutions to a problem that doesn't have to exist if you don't have these cyclical universes. In other words, these cyclical universes seem to have a lot more things to explain, with some of these explanations being very, very far-fetched. And of course, that study from last year, with the video in the description, kind of more or less presented the evidence against that as well. And so if there's no evidence in the CMB, and if the idea of entropy makes this even more unlikely, then why do some sciences still believe in this cyclical universe? Well, once again, it's because of those other things, like inflation, that they don't seem to agree with and try to explain it away. As a matter of fact, there are currently at least four main propositions when it comes to cyclical cosmology. The loop quantum cosmology, the one that was just recently addressed in that paper, which might have actually put it in a difficult situation, the conformal cyclical cosmology proposed by Roger Penrose, which basically involves multiple big bangs, but the universe kind of smoothing out between the big bangs, something that can be visualized this way. And so here the idea is that the universe becomes extremely old and reaches a point where it's so smooth that you cannot tell anything apart, which is when the new big bang begins. We also have one of the newest propositions, referred to as the bohm frampton model, which assumes that the universe expands over time so much that right before it rips itself apart, once again due to quantum effects, instead of ripping apart, it restarts with a new Big Bang. So basically proposing that the universe pretty much becomes completely empty and starts again as soon as it's about to finish. And lastly, the more complex steinhardt turek model that also involves the universe running back in time and even brings concepts from string theory to explain certain things, but because of its complexity, probably deserves its own video that we're going to be doing sometime in the future. So subscribe if you want to learn more. And so at the moment, these four ideas are the only ones that kind of try to oppose the Big Bang theory. But this theory still has way more evidence. Or I guess that's maybe a little bit incorrect. There's just no evidence whatsoever, at the moment, that suggests that the universe is cyclical. 
Previous assumptions or previous explanations have so far been sort of disproven or explained in a way where it does not require any cyclicity. And so at least for now, the Big Bang Theory just is the simplest explanation that currently makes sense. Is it the best? Well, it's the best we have. Is it the right explanation? That we might not know for a while. But we're definitely going to have more evidence, because that's one of the main missions of the James Webb. It's not going to collect any evidence for cyclical cosmology, but it's going to collect more evidence for everything that's been proposed about the Big Bang. And more importantly, it's already done a pretty good job at sort of proving a lot of concepts we had about the Big Bang by showing us the evolution of the universe in the first 1 billion years. And though this idea definitely sounds cool and would make for a pretty cool science fiction story, since the anomalies in the CMB have been so far explained without the use for multiple universes, it basically suggests that we currently do not need any cyclical cosmology to explain the observations. But it doesn't mean that it's wrong, it just means that there's not enough evidence, with all of the observations so far not requiring anything to exist before the Big Bang. But because this is not a definitive proposition, and because the Big Bang theory is still evolving, it means that we're going to be coming back and talking more about this once there is more data, more evidence, and more observations. Until then, check out some of the previous videos or similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.